Good afternoon, parents, teachers, and community members. My name is Dr. Dominguez, and I am the VAPA principal here at Feaster Charter School. On behalf of the admin team, we would like to wish you and your family a happy new year and welcome you to our Coffee with the Principals. Today has been a historic day in the inauguration of the new administration, specifically as the first female, Black, and Asian American has taken the oath of office. And despite the political party, we are hopeful for a continued brighter and better future. And so thank you for joining us this afternoon as we have several items that we would like to update our parent community uh, with. And with that, we would first like to start with something that has happened in, uh, in the past, which was our Operation Bring Joy. And so I just wanted to share a little bit about what our Operation Bring Joy is and, and take a moment to give a huge shout out to our counseling department, which includes Ms. Haro, Ms. Cantwell, and Mrs. Perez Chica. Over the course of several months and several months leading up to Christmas and, and the holiday season, what they noticed was that this year, the holiday season just has was not the same as in years past. And, and the students that they serve, which include 85 students on a, a weekly basis, there were certain themes that kept coming up. And, and what they felt compelled to do was to seek a seek donations and, and grants and, and, and reach out to the community so that they were able to uh, bring joy to our, our students and, and to our, our community. And so uh, the week leading up to our winter break, that Friday before winter break, they hosted a wonderful event out in the front of the school uh, and named it Operation Bring Joy, where they were able to provide students and families with several gifts uh, that ranged from fun, fun presents that, that students, you know, toys and it ranged from toys to blankets and, and everything in between. And so um, in just a moment, you'll see the, the process that they took, which included going shopping to several stores and, and loading up the backs of, of their, their cars with gifts and, and plush toys and, and, uh, and game boards and everything that, that students would students and, and families would enjoy during the holiday season. And so what you're seeing on the next slide are pictures of, uh, of just that, of, of our team, Miss Jeannie, Miss Cantwell, Miss Perez Chica, and Miss Haro going into various stores and, and shopping and, and bringing in uh, truckloads or carloads of gifts to, to pass out to our students and, and their siblings. And so on the uh, so with that, that also included several days of wrapping. And so what you'll see here is just a, a room full of gifts and, and that include toys and blankets, uh, and they all needed to be wrapped. So thankfully, with, with their help, as well as the help of some of our uh, instructional aides, they were able to get each and every gift wrapped so that students would have something to open uh, during the holiday season. And so on the day of the the operation bring joy or on the gift away uh we had several several students come out uh, we had we served over 400 students during that time period and we were able to provide them uh either with with a gift or a care package um we were able to personalize some some gifts for for children as well and 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 provide blankets and so we we were able to fulfill that need of, of bringing joy. And, and I know that our community was extremely grateful. So I just wanted to take a moment to, again, give a huge shout out to Ms. Haro, Ms. Cantwell, and Mrs. Perez Chica, who collectively impacted over 400 students. Uh, and you can see the, the impact there with uh, 227 students uh, receiving gifts in TK through third grade and 161 students receiving gifts from fourth through eighth grade. And so thank you to our counseling department. Thank you to our, our donors for giving us a donation to, to bring joy to, to our students and, and to our community. And so uh, although that happened last, last month, we know uh, that we are still very appreciative of, of the donation, the hard work that went into making this event happen. And so with that, 
Uh, we're going to make a, a little bit of a pivot and a little bit of a transition. I, uh, uh, and so Dr. Mott Singer will be sharing a little bit about the new governor's updates with reopening and, and uh, what some of the topics that you may have heard of uh, on the news. And so with that, I'll pass it over to Dr. Mott Singer. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Dr. Motzinger. I am the principal of the STEM Academy and uh, currently also serving as the interim executive director. And I, I would like to thank all of you for joining us this afternoon and echo what Dr. Dominguez shared about um, a change moving forward and, and goodness for our country. So I uh, hope you had a chance to watch the inauguration today. And, and if not, catch a repeat this evening and, and share it with your, your students. There's some kid-friendly versions out there uh, that we encourage you to share this momentous occasion. Um, so that being said, uh, I want to provide a little bit of an update on what our governor has shared with, with the state in the last couple weeks. So uh, as you know, about two weeks ago, Governor, governor Newsom extended the stay-at-home order uh, for an indefinite amount of time until we have a ICU capacity that is less or greater than 15%. And so um, at this time, we are still in a stay-at-home order. We are still in the purple tier and we will be following very closely um, the updates from the governor. So one, one thing he also mentioned that I would like to point out uh, is he shared that the, the there would be a big push to open schools by the end of February. And while we certainly echo the sentiments that we would love for students to be back on campus, we also know that it's really important that it's a safe environment to do so. And so as we mentioned in the last copy with the principals, we will continue to make plans for Feaster's reopening, which Dr. Dominguez will share with you in a moment, but know that we will not be actually reopening or setting a date for reopening until the, the county is back in that red tier. So again, right now we're in purple. It's, you can follow it on the news. Um, we will not be considering a reopening date until we are back into the, the red tier. Um, so another point that the governor shared last week uh, was he proposed his budget for the 21-22 uh, calendar year. And so that budget actually included a significant amount of money dedicated to education and to reopening schools. And uh, although the budget still needs to be passed, the proposal includes money uh, to not only to reopen schools, but to address the significant learning loss that we know many of our students have uh, incurred over the last eight months of being out of school, um, and also to address any mental health issues that have, have our students have faced while, while being out of school. And so we are following very closely the budget, we're following very closely the reopening guidelines, and we will keep you updated as fast as we get information. Um, but really important to note that although there is a push for schools to reopen by the end of February, we will be following the the numbers and looking for that number to be back in the red tier. And so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Dominguez, and she's going to share a little bit about the plans we've, be, we've been creating. Uh, so when that day comes, we're ready for students. Thank you. And so as Dr. Motzinger mentioned, you know, we certainly recognize that uh, that we are currently in a, a situation where there are, are continued uh, high percentages of, of positive COVID cases. And so we, we certainly recognize that. And, and we have continued to take precautions here at Easter um, in, a, in an effort to minimize that. So some of the things that we have done uh, is that right after winter break, we delayed the start, the start date of our distance learning support program, which is the, the group of students and YMCA staff that come to campus to complete their distance learning uh, on campus. And so currently we have a small group of about 50 students that is you know, that, that, uh, that regularly come and, and complete their distance learning work here at Feaster. And so we, we uh, believed that with delayed start time, that would allow us a, a couple of more days to identify any positive cases and, and to to quarantine uh, or to recommend quarantine for, for those individuals. And so we feel comfortable and confident that with the added precautions and, and the continued attention to safety and, and health and wellness, that uh, we will be able to uh, avoid any outbreaks here, here on campus. And so along with that, with every in every classroom and in every office, we have fully equipped uh, each room with a HEPA air filter, which 
uh, essentially is able to purify any toxins within the air. And, and so every room here on campus has an a air filter that runs continuously throughout the day if that room is, is being occupied. And so, uh, again, we believe that these precautions will support us in, in decreasing or, or not increasing uh, any types of positive cases uh, that may come up. And so the last, or actually the second to last piece that I'd like to uh, bring up is that we want to assure, reassure and, and communicate with our, our community that we certainly have a process in place when there are individuals that uh, do test positive for COVID. And so uh, over the last couple of weeks, we have, uh, you know, we, we, we have been we have been committed to that process. And so in the event that there is an individual on campus that does test positive, we have 24 hours to uh, communicate with those individuals that they are directly in contact with and let them know of, of a positive case. Of course, we uh, maintain all privacy when it comes to the name and uh, the position of, of the employee. We do not give any of that information out or, or individual, I should say. Uh, we do not give any of that in information out, but we have, like I said, a, a very strict um, policy and procedure in the event that there is a positive case uh, here on campus. And so uh, you, you, you may, if you are directly connected, you may receive a, a letter from, from Feaster uh, informing you or, or the community that there was a positive case. Um, but please just rest assured that that is part of our process. We want to take a transparent process and uh, procedure in, in these very difficult times. And so uh, as Dr. Motzinger alluded, we have been, while we do not have a date for reopening, we have been working towards what that would look like. And so uh, here at Feaster, we have a reopening committee, which is comprised of our administra administration, uh, our instructional coaches, as well as our lead teachers. And so this is a, a voluntary committee that, you know, some teachers and, and uh, committee members are, are committing to, uh, for lack of a better term. And, and in that process, we are, the, the purpose is really to uh, provide input on, on what it will look like when, when we do return. And so we have been meeting regularly uh, this year, and we are, are working towards making sure that uh, in the event or when we do return, that uh, we have a solid plan in place for both our students, our staff members, our teachers, and our parents. And so as we begin to uh, confirm the details of that plan and we have a, a plan to share, we will be sure to, to communicate that with our community. And so with that, I am going to go ahead and pass it over to Dr. Slayman, and she will be sharing a little bit about our reopening surveys. Good afternoon, Feaster family. I'm Dr. Slayman, and I'm the proud associate principal here at Feaster Charter School. Uh, and just to continue with what Dr. Dominguez was saying, we are here at Feaster planning the return of our students. And one of the things that is driving that is the reopening surveys. And so you may have received a message from your homeroom teacher indicating that you fill out a survey. And again, that survey really is the driving force in our planning efforts because that will indicate to us what percentage of students will be returning to on campus and what percentage of students will be remaining in distance learning. So again, those, those surveys are out. If you have not received a survey, please contact your homeroom teacher and they can provide you with the individual link because there is a link specifically for a survey for TK through second, for third through sixth, and then we also have a middle school survey. Again, we really need every single family to indicate whether the students are returning or are not returning. The last day to complete the surveys is going to be Friday, January 29th of 2021. And if you have previously filled out the survey and you want to change your response so if before you indicated that you wanted distance learning as an option, but now you want to change your mind to uh, having the students return on campus, you can fill out the survey again. We do check those on a weekly basis and we update the teachers as they go. And so teachers are checking week by week and we'll be sure to keep nudging you along the way so that we have every single survey back from every single student on campus. To uh, another update that we wanted to provide to you is just end of the quarter 
uh, reminders. And so we are approaching the end of the quarter. The end of the quarter for all of our students is January 29th. We are about a week off from the district. So just a couple of reminders here. Uh, Parent-teacher conferences will be happening for some classrooms from January 25th through the 29th. These are optional conferences. And so if you do not receive a conference date or time, do not worry. But if you do have a question or want to meet with your teacher, please go ahead and contact them. They will have the afternoons uh, to be able to meet with parents and students. Uh, which many teachers are, are going to have. Um, some teachers are going to continue with synchronous instruction. Report cards will be sent to you through digitally by your homeroom teacher by Friday, January 29th. They will be in contact sending it to you through either ClassDojo, through email, or their preferred method of communication with you. But you should receive a digital report card for your student by Friday, January 29th. The last update that we have for end of the quarter uh, reminders is that we will be hosting our student of the month and um, honor roll assemblies in the classrooms the first week of February, which will be the first week of quarter three. And so um, again, just look for that. It will be held by your homeroom teachers in digital classroom and we will make every effort to be able to attend as many as we can. We hope to see you there and to continue celebrating the academic successes of our students. Our uh, last reminder is uh, we have the Positive Parenting Program and the Positive Parenting Program is a three uh, free session live webinar and really the purpose of the program is to guide parents to teach their children to learn from their mistakes to self-regulate and to make better choices, which we've known to uh, see that it helps reduce stress levels for the whole family, resulting in better communication, more cooperation, mutual respect, and demonstration of love at home. We know if children know uh, how to regulate, self-regulate at home, then that translates over to the school, to the classroom, and beyond. And so we highly, highly encourage you to sign up for the Positive Parenting Program. Uh, the sessions will be held February 4th, 11 and 18th from 6 to 7 30 at night and if you are interested in, in registering please contact our main office um, our secretaries are happy to assist you in signing up for the programs currently right now the sessions will be offered in spanish but if we have over 20 participants that want to participate in english we will be offering uh, another joint session in english as well so again please contact the main office and they will be happy to assist you in signing up for this free three webinar series. And so at this time, if you have not already done so and you have a question that you would like for us to answer, please go ahead and type it out in the chat and uh, we will make sure to address your question. We do have a few of them already in the chat. And so I will be fielding those questions over to our two principals. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to type them in to the Q&A and we will get to them. The first question that we have uh, this afternoon is for Dr. Motzinger, and uh, we have a parent wondering uh, why um, Mr. Francisco Velasco left his position. Thank you for your question. Uh, Mr. Velasco uh, retired at the end of December, and so we did send a letter home uh, with families letting them know um, of his retirement, but he retired effective December 18th, right before we left on break. And so we are in the process of working with the board on plans for, for the future. And so in, in the interim, I am serving in, in both the positions um, as, as the principal and, and any roles that um, the executive director had previously taken care of. Okay, and uh, the next question um, is for Dr. Dominguez. Can students receive a student ID for the current school year? Thank you for the question. So at this moment, uh, part, so when we receive uh, student IDs, it's part of our school picture program and, and, uh, and package. And so at this moment, we have paused uh, any attempts to try and organize a uh, school day picture uh, in the event that we're able to move back into the red, then we will we will at that point explore days and opportunities to host a, a picture day, which would then lead to the uh, student ID um, option. 
the next question is also for you, Dr. Dominguez. Can students receive the SBAC awards from last year by mail, uh, or can we pick those up in the front office? Thank you. And so uh, with the SBAC awards, while that is a strong tradition here at Feaster and, and something that we look forward to each and every year in an effort to celebrate the accomplishments of our students, uh, when the pandemic hit at the, uh, in March, uh, essentially everything was on paused. And so at this point, uh, that also included, or it also included the SBAC awards. And so uh, unfortunately we do not have SBAC awards to, to pass out for students. Uh, and in fact, when, when we return, when that time comes, we will, we will start fresh with that, with that tradition. The next question is for Dr. Motzinger. Uh, there is a parent who is wondering if it is safe to use the pandemic EBT card uh, that was received in the mail. Yes, thank you for that question. Um, that's a great question. So the pandemic EBT card that you received in the mail uh, was is on behalf of the federal government for students who would normally qualify to receive free lunch at school. And so although we are providing uh, school lunches every Tuesday from 12 o'clock until two o'clock, the federal government also has some additional grants available to provide uh, an EBT, like a, a debit type card that's taken anywhere that food stamps or EBT cards are taken to help support those families who uh, normally would be receiving free lunch from school. So the short answer is yes, it is safe to use uh, anywhere where EBT cards are accepted. Okay, so I, I do not see any further questions. However, we'll wait uh, about a minute just to see if any additional questions come in. Uh, as usual, these events are recorded. And so if parents, if you are coming in at the very end of our event and was wondering what we had updated the community on, we will be posting this on our websites and uh, you have access to it anytime that you choose to, to log in and, and review this session. And so at, at this point in time, there are no further questions that I see, just an appreciation for, for what we do. So we, we appreciate uh, we appreciate our community and our Falcon family. Anything that we can do uh, to better serve you, please, we're only a phone call away. All right, well, with that, we will, we have no further questions, so we will sign off tonight. Again, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. And if in case you're joining us a little bit late, these sessions will be recorded and will be uploaded on our Feaster Charter School website. Have a wonderful evening.